I've just had a request from Mr. Brantley's third grade class at Cumberland Elementary School to talk about Sierpinski's Triangle. So here we are. The Sierpinski's Triangle is a fractal shape that's at least related to uh, the Cook Snowflake that I talked about in an earlier video. And it's uh, made in the same sort of way. It's made by repeating a set of instructions starting with a certain shape. And just like the Cook Snowflake, the Sierpinski Triangle starts with an equilateral triangle. Now I should point out the Sierpinski Triangle is named after somebody, a Polish mathematician named Wacław Sierpinski, who first defined this in 1915, um, although it seems to have shown up in art long before then. This was 1915 was the first time it got described accurately uh, mathematically. So the algorithm is pretty simple. You start with an equilateral triangle, and then you find the center point on each side. I'm going to kind of eyeball this. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So I mark the center points. Now connect the center points. And you get another equilateral triangle. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to pretend that the original triangle was solid and the parts that we cut out um, are not solid anymore. We leave a hollow there. So I'm going to uh, shade this here to show that's still solid and we're going to take the solid parts out here in a minute. Let me make that a little denser. There we go. There. So we had a solid triangle. Now we've got three little triangles that are also equilateral triangles and we're missing one. So we cut an equilateral triangle out, left three others on what had been a larger equilateral triangle. Well, each of these is similar to the, uh, to the original. They have the same proportions. The only thing different is these are smaller than the original. So if we did this once, let's do it again. Let's divide this in half. And again, I'm just going to eyeball this. I'm not exactly correct, but you get the idea. OK, so there we go. Now I'm going to erase the part the parts that I just outlined here like we did before. Okay, so there it goes there. Here's the one on top. Okay, and here there's all kinds of Sierpinski triangle generators on the internet too. If you want to make these things, you don't want to write your own program. There's lots of programs out there that'll help you do it. Okay, so this is what's called the second iteration. The, the, L0 was the, or S0 I guess we'll call it, was the original triangle. S1 was with the big triangle removed, and S2 was with these other little triangles removed. So we had one, then we had three triangles remaining. Now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine triangles remaining. We can do this again, can't we? If I were to cut out more triangles, I could keep repeating this set of instructions. This is called an algorithm. I could keep repeating this algorithm as many times as I wanted. Now, and in theory, I could go to infinity. Now, I want to make sure you understand, infinity is not a big number. Infinity is a concept, right? There is no such number as infinity. Whatever number you make up, I can always add one to it and make one bigger. So there's no such thing as a number that's infinity. It's a concept. That's pretty subtle, but it's important. Okay, so I can keep doing this. I can make S sub infinity if I want. Now there's two properties to a Sierpinski triangle that make it really, really interesting and they're easy to figure out. Let's look at the area. Okay, the area of the Sierpinski triangle. Well, we started out with a triangle of some area, whatever that was. And we had, if you remember, we had it divided up into four triangles and erased the middle one. So the triangle, we, this, the area we had after the first iteration was equal to the area of the first one times 3 over 4 because we removed one triangle and we kept three others. So A1 is A0 times 3 over 4, where A0 is the area of the original triangle, this great big one I started with. It turns out it doesn't really matter what A0 is, okay? And if you keep going, A2 equals A1, times three quarters, and so on. What you'll find out is a to the a of n, which is the nth triangle. That means you've executed this algorithm n times, where n is just some integer, one, two, three, four, whatever. 
is going to be a0 times 3 over 4 to the n. Well, okay, what happens when you take 3 over 4 and multiply it by itself n times, what if n's a really big number, like 100 or 1,000? This number right there in the parentheses becomes 0. So, as uh, you can tell I'm one step ahead of myself here, as n goes to infinity, now it can never actually get to infinity because infinity is not a number, it's a concept, then 3 quarters to the n power goes to 0. You know what that means? That means that a true Sierpinski triangle where you've executed this algorithm, you've repeated this you know, erasing process infinity times, has an area of zero. So a Sierpinski triangle has an area of zero. Crazy, huh? Even though we started out with something that has area, has dark sections on it, if you execute this algorithm enough times, you remove all the shaded parts. All you got left is holes. It's made up completely of holes and nothing else. All right? Now, we can't imagine that ourselves because we can't execute something infinity times. I mean, we're not going to live that long. Um, but you can imagine it in your mind's eye that as this, you execute this, you, you repeat this uh, set of instructions, you repeat this cutting process infinite number of times, you'll wind up everywhere there's a shaded place, you'll cut some more of it away. Eventually, there isn't any shaded place left. All you have are edges. Hmm. So, let's talk about the circumference now. We talk about circumference of a circle, but really what I'm look, looking about is the length of all the edges. Okay, maybe I can call that L. Well, L1 equals L0, where L is the the original length of the tri the triangle, three units, whatever that is. If you remember, let's go back to let me change pens, and I'll go back. Let me turn red. How's that? And we'll go back to that original. S1, the first time we did our cutting and erasing, the first time we executed that set of commands. Well, originally, let's, let's just count area, size of triangles. We had one, two, three, four, five, six to start. That was uh, L0, I guess. L1, we had three extra sides. So when we started out with one, two, three, four, five, six sides, we wound up with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine sides. So just like that's um, A0 times 3 over 4 to the n, this is L0 times 9 over 6 to the n, which is really L0 3 over 2 to the n, if I divide both of those by 3. So if we take 3 over 2 to the n, so as n goes to infinity and gets bigger and bigger and bigger, then 3 over 2 to the n goes to infinity, because this is more than one, all right? So every time we multiply it by itself, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, just by the same sense that this one got smaller and smaller and smaller. So even though this shape has an area of zero as n goes to infinity, it has a circumference, the length of all the edges, goes to infinity. So a Sierpinski triangle has this just crazy property. Infinite length around all the edges, and no area. So there you go.